Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, got a couple things to show off. I made some uh, progress on what I was talking about, how I wanted to implement a as-needed type of mentality to the all the mapping options I had. Um, so I've made some progress in that. And we'll take a peek here. Uh, so what I will do is if I click Add Mapping now, instead of the previous window where we got a huge list of every option imaginable, um, now we just get source channel, destination channel, and connectors. And the connectors are only really needed if uh, you actually need to do something with it. Uh, say we have left bumper, we're going to map that to left trigger, uh, which is a common one that people ask about, wanting to be able to swap their bumpers and triggers around. So. Uh, next thing you'll notice is that there is some color coding now. And what that is, is these correspond to the channel types. Um, bumper being a actual button, which has an on-off value. Trigger being a axis, uh, which has a value from 0 to 1. Uh, because those are two different types, uh, they show us two different colors. And what we need to do is add a connector here to tell it uh, to connect those two together. So what we can do here is we can set the value when the button is pressed, the value when it's released, hit OK, and that connector pops in. And you can add as many as you want. They'll stack. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is start implementing some drag and drop. Um, this is actually, uh, this all started coming together this morning, so I don't even have the ability to delete connectors yet. Uh, so uh, that's I still got a little work to do before I can push this to you guys to start playing around with. Uh, I have a little placeholder button you can see. I can open that up and bring up the settings for it again if I want to tweak it. Um, one of the big uh, things that took me a minute was one of the issues I also came across when I was working with the, uh, the triggers and the events uh, for the macros and input mapper, and that is how to duplicate this across so that each device is running its own instance uh, because some of these connectors uh, need to be instanced because they need to house some of their own values such as the trigger or, I'm sorry such as the toggle um, it needs to have its own value inside of the connector that tells it whether or not it is currently toggled um, that can't be a shared value so I had to create a way to dynamically instance this to the other controllers, but for them to all share the same settings. And previously with the macros, uh, I was re-copying the settings every time it changed and uh, letting it you know, go out to all the devices. It would kind of trickle down to them. Um, now I just have them working all off of a central reference. Uh, so this should be easier. Um, the changes should take effect immediately on now, unlike the macros, which uh, you would have to assign, unassign the profile and reassign it. Um, if this works, all the changes should be instant as you do it. And if it continues to work, I will take this methodology and apply it to the macros as well um, to solve that issue of having to you know, unassign a profile and reassign it in order to get the macro changes to take effect. So. Anyways, all that said, um, what's next is I have to start recreating all those settings in as connectors. Um, all the tuning options I had, uh, you can see there I can stack them and these colors kind of match. Um, the UI needs still a little bit of help, but you see it's a blue value going into a blue here, leaving as a purple, going in as a purple, leaving as a purple, and then assigning to a purple here. So all that makes sense. Uh, I'll probably have some sort of a warning down here that pops up if uh, you're trying to make connections or whatever that uh, where the types don't match up. Uh, but yeah. Um, I'm also probably going to have those connectors show up in here as well just so you have a nice little uh, easy visualization. Um, I also have to change you can see these aren't named properly. These are actually just the the type names inside of Input Mapper. Um, I have to change these to a more user-friendly name, which will shorten them up too. 
Uh, but yeah, that's basically where I stand right now. Um, I have to create a lot more of the converters, uh, but or the yeah the connectors. But as you can see, that's actually pretty simple to do. This is a sample. Uh, this is one of the connectors that is just taking the button and mapping it to an axis, axis, depending on uh, the values you select. So, uh, yeah, creating these is pretty simple. Just a couple lines of code. Um, and here's how I set the colors by telling it what the input type is and what the output type is. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start doing that today as well as try to polish the UI some more. Um, I need to have the ability to reorder them. Um, hopefully drag and drop is easy enough to implement. I think I have a library already hidden around in input mapper somewhere that handles drag and drop because I think I was using that for the old macro builder. So I can hopefully repurpose that. Um, as well as just polish some other little things too. But yeah, everything looks like it's working good. Um, it's still very fast, a lot faster than it was, which is great. So uh, that's one of the big goals I had was to make sure that the latency and all that stuff is down. So uh, expect to build in the next couple of days as I add all the features back in using this new, uh, using this new connector method. All right, guys, have a good one.